The Path Workbench in FreeCAD is used to generate G-code to control CNC machines like milling machines, routers, and laser cutters. Path is still under active development and a lot of things don't work as they would be expected, but it is capable of doing some pretty interesting things right now. In this video I'm going to run through the basic configuration of a CNC project and, I'll, and also the configuration of some of the common uh, operations like profiling and pocketing. If you're trying to follow along with what I'm doing, you might want to make sure that you've got one setting configured correctly in the Path Preferences. Open up the Application Preferences dialog after you've started the Path Workbench and navigate to the Path icon and then to the General Path Settings and make sure that Automatic Project Handling is turned on. This is the default, but you'll definitely want it turned on or other things will start to act kind of funny. The first thing you'll want to do in a path project is to create a, a path project container inside your, your project file. Most of the operations in here will automatically create a project if it doesn't exist, but in this case I'm going to go ahead and create one manually. Clicking on the path project button We'll add the node to the tree in a collapsed state, and if you open it, you'll see that it has one thing underneath, which is the machine definition. The machine definition also contains the tool table, which at this point is empty. Selecting the node and clicking on the tool table button will open up the dialog. This dialog can be used to import tool tables uh, from Heek CNC and a couple of other uh, types or you can go ahead and create the tools manually here and I'm going to add two of them so we can use them in the operations that follow. I'll set the first one to be a 5 millimeter tool. I do that by this is just the label and then I'll give the diameter as 5. It'll default to millimeters in, in my case. The second one I'll set to be a 1 millimeter tool just so we can see the difference in the path generation. Adding the tool table doesn't automatically add any tools to the existing project. So the first thing that I'd want to do is uh, do a tool change operation and that's done with this icon. Tool is inserted into the project and it's set to tool 0 by default. I'm going to set this to tool 1, which was our 5 millimeter tool, and I'm going to go ahead and set the spindle speed to 3000 RPMs. Now that we've got a project file and a tool defined, we can start doing some actual operations with it. In the Path Workbench, most of the operations work the same way, where you first select some geometry to act on, and then select an operation to act on that geometry. So for instance to do a pocket operation in this in this uh, lowered part I select the bottom face and then the pocket operation. You can see that the the uh, path has been generated and the back plot displayed. The red moves are a rapid move and the green moves are, are feed moves at, at depth. I can then select the operation and change the parameters to adjust how it's, it's uh, uh, calculated. For instance, um, I may not want to step all the way down to the bottom in one move, so I can change the step down value to uh, half a millimeter at a time. And you'll see that the back plot immediately updates to show the two different passes. You can see that my profile operation has been added into the project tree and it's affected by the tool change that came before. If I were to go back and change the tool to tool number two, which was the one millimeter tool, you'll see the back plot immediately adjusts uh, for the narrower tool. You also see that this, uh, I'm going to switch this back to tool number one to reduce it and you'll see that the 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 
path that was generated isn't really uh, correct. It's not a, uh, respecting the islands that are in the middle and the tool is moving directly through them. This is a limitation of the open cascade uh, offset algorithm that's used. Uh, it's not very mature yet, uh, but it does work for simple pockets. For something like this where you've got islands, uh, there's a better alternative. Uh, the, the lib area library that's used in Heek CNC has been at least partially integrated into the path module. If you select the pocket operation, you'll see that there's an option here for the algorithm that's used to generate the path and you can switch this to the lib area version and when you click off of it the path is updated here. Because we're using a pretty big tool you'll see that there's parts where the tool can't get in between but if I switch that back again to tool 2 you'll see that we have a much better looking path here that actually respects the islands. Lib area has a lot more settings that can be used to fine tune this. Uh, for instance, the uh, it's able to do a zigzag cutting pattern, and the zig angle can be changed to further adjust it. And at this point, we're getting a, a pretty useful looking path that's clearing most of the area. If we were actually cutting this, we'd end up with some rough spots along the edges where the, where the tool didn't fully clean, so you'd probably want to go back and do a profile operation inside here to clean up this edge. I'll do that next. To keep from getting too cluttered here, I'm going to go ahead and turn off this pocket operation just by setting the active property to false and clicking off. To do a profile operation, I could select the face again and this time select the profile operation button. And it doesn't look like anything happened except for this here. Uh, what's happened is that the, the profile has been generated, but it's actually generating on the outside of the bottom or the, uh, of the edge of the face. If I were to toggle out the visibility on the solid, we could see the whole path there. This can be adjusted by selecting the profile operation and changing which side of the line it cuts on from left to right. There's also the option to cut on the line which is useful for things like laser cutting or, or engraving. At that point we now have a, uh, an accurate profile operation at a single step down. The same depth parameters uh, as those used in a pocket work here as well. Besides an internal profile, we also use a, a profile for her cutting a part out of a piece of stock. Works pretty much the same way. And uh, I'm first going to add another tool change, and I'm going to change back to tool number one, but I'll leave tools two in place for the other operations. Now I'm going to select the top face, <clears throat> and I'll add a profile operation. You can see it's set out by the diameter of the cutter. For a profile operation like this, what we'd really like to do is to leave some holding tabs in place to keep the material from breaking loose when the cutter finishes. That isn't possible with the OCC profile operation, but Liberia does have a feature to do it. The first thing I would do is select the profile operation and switch to Liberia. Now I can double click on the profile and open up this uh, dialog to create holding tags. I'll add the tags like this, and you'll see it kind of messed up the, the profile. Well, that's because the location of the tag is right now at the corner. This dialog is uh, pretty rough uh, and unfinished, but it does work. What you do is come in and adjust the XY coordinates of the tag. In this case, I'm going to move it down <clears throat> to about 20 millimeters from the edge. So I'll set the X position to 20.0 and you can see that the holding tag location popped down here but it's still too high and it's bigger than it needs to be so I'll reduce the size to two millimeters high by five millimeters wide. I can also, if I stretch this out a little bit, 
adjust the angle that's calculated here. I'll go ahead and make this an 80 degree angle for a nearly straight up and down. That has two more operations that are generally pretty useful. Uh, one is a drilling operation and it's done by selecting either a circular edge, a circular face, or a point location or multiple point locations. If you select circles of different sizes the, it, it will warn you or actually it will give an error when you try to create the drilling operation because it wants to make sure that all the holes are the same size. If you want to drill pre-drill holes of different sizes you can create different operations for them. Works the same way. Select the geometry and then click the drilling operation and the uh, back plot is shown. It identifies the center and, and uh, places the rapid and the feed moves. The drilling operation has a number of different settings for it to control peck depth and uh, uh, start depth and final depth as well. The last operation I'm going to cover in this is the uh, engraving operation and it works on a shape string. I have a shape string here which I'll toggle the visibility select the shape string by selecting it in the tree instead of over here. If you try to select it here you'll get the individual elements and not the entire shape string. So for this one you need to select in the tree and create an engraving operation like this. I toggle the shape string visibility off again. You can see that the path has been created to trace the outside and inside parts of each of the the letters and glyphs. The shape string is untranslated or unaffected by the operation. So if I come in and adjust the text that's here, the path is automatically updated to show the new text. This goes for tracking, font, and size as well. Okay, at this point I got a whole bunch of paths in my project and you can see that a lot of them aren't right, that there's things that are wrong. And I could correct some of that by altering the sequence or adjusting the, the uh, properties of each of the uh, operations. But I might want to need to dig in a little farther to see what's going wrong. For any of these things you can click on them and select this tool to get a look at the raw commands in the operation. This is sort of a simplified version of G-code. It doesn't have everything that would show up in a final in the final output, but it's enough to kind of browse through and see what's going on. Now if you want to produce actual G-code for an actual machine, you need to run it through a post processor. What you do is select the, the project that you want to generate the G-code from and click on File, Export then select, give it a name for the file, and select G code. When you save it, it'll present a dialog and ask you to, to select the post processor. These post processors are all defined in the mod path path scripts directory under the install location. I'll, I'll select the Linux CNC post in this case. It'll throw the output into a display window so I can see how it's actually formatted. And you'll see that things like the, the preamble uh, and some of the properties that weren't in any one of the operations have been now included. Some of the other post processors will automatically generate line numbers or format differently depending on what's needed. Post processors can also be copied and modified. They're just Python, and they're, it's uh, uh, fairly straightforward how to do that by studying that code. Post processing this way works just fine, but there's a lot of clicking involved and, and typing. And a lot of times you generate the same file over and over again while you're refining it. So there are some things that can make it a little bit easier and reduce uh, all that busy work. Uh, if you click on the project node, 
there's an option in the properties to select the output file. And if you select the machine, you can select the post processor to be used. I've got my post processors stored in my macro directory, which is on uh, Dropbox. In this case, I'm going to select my the post processor for my laser engraver. With those things set, you just select the project node and click the post processor button. And you'll see that the, the uh, code is generated using the selected post and formatted accordingly. When you click OK, it's written to the file and saved. OK, that's it for now. There's a lot more in path that I didn't cover uh, and a lot more to do. So I guess keep an eye on the forums and jump in and help out if you can. Thanks.